everyone, Darkside Phil here, and welcome to the Weekend Preview for September 23rd, 2012. Uh, and this is going to be a unique week coming up for a lot of different reasons. We've got probably one of the widest variety of games ever uh, coming out in this coming week. Uh, we've got Panda Lee coming to spend some time with me, so that's going to create some co-op gameplay. We've got uh, the possibility of some releases, but it's not set in stone. Really confusing. We've got surprise DLCs. So I'll get to all this in the Week in Preview, okay? But as usual, excuse me, when we do the Week in Preview, we start off with a recap of what I did last week. And in particular, <clears throat> with this video, I do want to address a couple specific things that happened this past week that need to be addressed because, you know, sometimes... I, I have to kind of look at a situation, I have to put my foot down, and I have to relate to my, my viewers and fans ex exactly, number one, my honest feelings, but, you know, my, my honest thoughts on what happened during a situation, and whether or not it should be handled differently, um, <clears throat> but you'll understand what I mean when we get to it. So, first of all, this past week, uh, what did I do on, on my gaming channels? Well, I decided to actually wrap up some Tekken Tag Tournament 2 footage uh, last week to do my final kind of you know, say on what I thought about the game. Um, so I did, I believe it was Sunday, I actually did some Tekken Tag 2 Tournament footage uh, of the other game modes of Tekken Tag Tournament 2. So we're talking survival mode, tag battle mode, that kind of thing, team battle mode, sorry. Um, and then finally I gave my review on the game. Now. Immediately people started saying, is that it? Is Phil completely done with Tekken Tag Tournament 2 forever? The answer is no, not necessarily. There are some things coming up that there may be some cool opportunities to play the game again. Uh, case in point, I do specials for the holidays, or at least I try. Last year I didn't get to do a holiday special because I was too busy with, uh, with Skyrim and Zelda Skyward Sword. But if I do a holiday special this year, obviously playing Tekken Tag Tournament 2 with the fans is one of the cool things I could do for the holiday fan appreciation. Um, and plus there's a Christmas themed stage in the game as well. So I'm going to hold on to the game. I'm not saying I'm playing it in the immediate future, especially because there's two fighting games coming out this week in particular, but I'm not getting rid of it, okay? It's a possibility I may play it again in the future. Uh, so I did review Tech Attack Tournament 2. You can check out that Hateful Truth. It's only the second fighting game I've ever reviewed, and that review is live, but actually I've set it as the main video over on DSP Street Fighter for the past several days so that it gets some exposure, okay? Um, then on Monday, I did something completely out of the ordinary, okay? Something a lot of people didn't expect. Uh, Half-Life <clears throat> is a PC game that has a very large, uh, dedicated fan base, people who grew up with this game who think it's one of the best, if not the best, PC game of all time. Well... A group of, uh, of people made a... F it's fan-made, by the way. It's not officially by Valve or anything. Fan-made HD remake of Half-Life called Black Mesa. And it actually is, uh, from what I'm to understand, quite different from the original game. A lot of things were changed to have modern gameplay elements to them. Some of the, the actual gameplay puzzles, things in the game, have been changed. All the graphics are tweaked. The game looks and plays great, okay? And I heard all of this, and I said, you know what? It, it had just been released last week around, like, I think it was around Friday-ish or whatever. And uh, I said, you know what? I'm going to try it out. I have a whole dead day here, Monday. I didn't have anything I had to specifically do. So I decided to try out Black Mesa. And I played it for, for all day, probably about four to five hours. And uh, I loved the hell out of the game, okay? Absolutely one of my favorite games of the year. Now, I don't know if I can even officially rank this in my Game of the Year rankings because technically it isn't a modern game. It's a game, it's a remake of Half-Life. So I don't know. I have to really put things into consideration whether I can rank it. But it's really freaking fun and good, okay? But what ended up happening was there's this one part of the game where you need to learn this game mechanic fairly early on called the Crouch Jump, okay? Now, just what I just said, it's called the Crouch Jump. That's a misnomer. And what that means is that the name is deceptive because it doesn't actually explain what it is. The crouch jump would make you think you have to crouch and jump or jump while crouching. That's not the case. The way to perform a crouch jump is to jump and then crouch while in midair. And if you do it properly, you actually get extra height in this game. Okay? This was a game mechanic that was present in the original Half-Life 
and its expansions. Now, I didn't have the pleasure to play those games back in the day. I played games like Unreal, Unreal Tournament, Quake, Quake 3 Arena, that kind of stuff. Supposedly the game might have had an implementation in like Quake 2. Guess what? I played Quake 2. I never did a crouch jump and I beat the whole fucking game. So I don't know how this was some necessary me me mechanic needed for the game, okay? So, I played Black Mesa and as I'm playing the game, unfortunately the game does not have the tutorial mode that was present in the original Half-Life. They actually removed the tutorial from this new remake of the game. So really what this game is trying to do is cater to people who are fans of the original Half-Life and make the game more modern. I wasn't a fan of the original Half-Life because I never played it, so I had no idea how this crouch jump mechanic worked, okay? So when I finally got to the part of the game where you're supposed to do it for the first time, on the screen it says space, control, crouch jump. It doesn't say jump then press crouch and you'll get a crouch jump that gives you extra height. It doesn't say here's how to implement it as if a tutorial would. It just says this blurb on the screen and then as it says that a head crab monster jumps and tries to attack you. So you have no time to even concentrate and try to figure out what it means. So what ended up happening was that I didn't understand what the hell was going on. I ended up trying to stack like barrels and items and jump on those to get over high jumps. And this actually worked for several hours of gameplay until I finally got to this one part of the game where you had to know how to do the crouch jump and I didn't know how to do it, okay? So finally when I got stuck, and this is the thing, I'm not reading an online fact, I'm not, you know, cheating, I'm trying to play these games as honest playthroughs, that's my style. So unless I get stuck, I don't cheat. Well, I got stuck. I had to look it up online. Finally, it was like a revelation. Wow, you're really? This is what I'm supposed to do? And from then on, it's been smooth sailing. No problem playing this game, okay? Here's the problem. As you know, again, I played the game cold. Didn't read a fact. Never played the original Half-Life. So even when I was playing, I was like, man, maybe this is a game bug, or this could be, you know, this is a weird jump mechanic that I didn't understand. Well... Someone in their wisdom decided to post my playthrough over on the Reddit, over on the 4chan forums, and of course these are people who are like the bowels of the internet. Now I don't mean Reddit in particular, Reddit is actually a place that can have some good come out of it, but a lot of the people who come out of these places, all they want to do is try to degrade, demean, and talk down to people because it makes them feel better. Probably because they're miserable sacks of shit in real life who are still living in their parents' basements and they think that they can get some pleasure out of saying that they're better than someone else. So they posted my videos of me having problems with the crouch jump because I didn't understand the mechanic over on these things. Thousands of people came in from these sites to troll my video, give them all thumbs down, thumbs down, thumbs down, and look, the nastiest fucking comments, not only on my videos of Black Mesa, but on my Twitter account as well, saying things such as, Wow, you don't know how to crouch jump, you're the biggest noob ever. Some people completely uneducated who don't say, Wow, you're too young to play this game. Yeah, 30 year olds are too young to play Half-Life. Um, you're oh, oh, the poorest excuse for a playthrough ever. Die. I hope that your business fails and that you get destitute and you end up on the street. People literally just saying, I hope you die in your sleep. Death, death wishes. This is the kind of stuff that comes out of those websites, okay? This was all over my videos and all over my Twitter account for two fucking days. So, here's the thing. I'm really not going to moderate comments anymore because I didn't try with this, by the way. I just saw what was happening. I was like, there's nothing I can do about it. I'm not going to spend hours trying to moderate the comments. I've decided that for the majority of the time, I'm not going to moderate comments anymore. It's not worth my time. It's too time consuming. I put out too much content at this point to moderate the comments. So you're going to see shit like that on my videos from time to time, especially when you have an event like that. You know, like I said, there are people who are crazy fanboys of Half-Life. That's perfectly fine. But do you to say, wow, this guy doesn't know the crouch jump. Let's make fun of him and degrade him for two days is ridiculous. But here's the thing. I got extra views out of it. I got massive extra views out of it. If you look at, I think it's parts 9, 10, and 11 of the Black Mesa playthrough where I got stuck, the, the other parts around them only have like five, 6,000 views. Those parts have between 10 to 20,000 views. I think one of them has like 26,000 views on it. So all I have to say is this. Thank you, you fucking worthless humans, 
for the views because you don't understand. You can thumbs down and give me negative comments all you want. People that don't know who I am, don't know that I'm doing a, a, a straight playthrough. I didn't do any research. I never played the original Half-Life. They don't even know that I'm 30 years old. They think I'm some kid playing this game. Guess what? You gave me money. You gave me extra money. So thank you so much for the bonus. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot for the bonus. I just love it when these idiots come on and they think that they're, oh, we're hurting him because we're making fun of him, when actually I make money off of you. So thank you to all the trollish idiots who acted immature for two straight days and did that on my Black Mesa playthrough, okay? That being said, I learned the mechanic and now I'm, so, I'm soaring through the game and I'm having lots of fun. So my Black Mesa playthrough started on Monday. Incidentally, later on in the week today, on Sunday, on Sunday, yes, I played more of it. And we'll talk more about my plans for that coming up, okay? I didn't beat the game yet, but I have some plans for it. Um, then on Tuesday, big co-op playthrough. This one took a lot of coordination and a lot of work to make this happen. Myself, John Rambo, and the Ariad Lord, who's our friend. He hangs out with us at conventions. We've known him for a couple of years now. He's done co-op with me before at several other games. We sat down at where we did a three-player co-op playthrough of Borderlands 2, okay? Now, here's what I have to say about this. Because I do have a lot to say about this today. I know that there's a lot of negativity surrounding change, surrounding different things that aren't of the norm. Okay? Hell, when John Rambo first started doing co-op with me, there were a lot of complaints about him that people didn't like him. Then when Howard came on board, there were complaints about him. There have been complaints about pretty much every single person we've ever had to do co-op. Okay? Because people are afraid of change. And... On the flip side of that, there are also people who are jealous. Jealous that they didn't get to participate in a co-op playthrough of this game. Maybe in particular because they didn't get to do it with me. And I understand that. Chris is a person who we've become friendly with over the past couple of years. And do I watch all his content? Absolutely not. Do I follow every single thing he possibly says? Absolutely not. So I don't know if there's anyone who has a legitimate gripe with him or not. That's not my point in this video or anything that I'm saying. What I'm trying to come out and say here is... When I do co-op with people, especially someone who maybe I don't do co-op with all the time, like Chris, you can't just say, oh, well, I don't like that kid in particular, so I'm going to write off this entire fucking playthrough because I don't like him. Because people were saying that. People were going over and flaming my videos, that he was recording the co-op playthrough as well over on his own YouTube channel. People were going there and shitting on him there. Listen, here's the deal, and this is my honest feeling about it. Chris is a good kid. Sometimes, sure, he can get a little overexcited or whatever, but I actually honestly think in this playthrough in particular of Borderlands 2 that he understood that this was a serious playthrough where we really had to do a good job. We had to beat the game within a certain time period. That was a constraint because all of us had to change our schedules to coordinate time-wise when we could all play together, and that was no easy feat, okay? He, he actually went out of his way to play Borderlands 1 right before playing Borderlands 2 so he would have a background in the game and be able to do better in this playthrough. In the playthrough, he's probably one of the best, if not the best player on the team because he just played Borderlands 1. He's understanding these mechanics of how to win. He's constantly saving Rambo and my ass when we get downed and stuff like that. He's being a cohesive team player. And okay, maybe every once in a while he makes a joke that goes flat. But guess what? That happens with me and Rambo, too. It's no different. So, I don't understand where anyone gets the fuck off by saying, we don't like this guy, and he's a detriment to the playthrough, and never do a playthrough with him again. You know what I say to those people? Fuck you! Because I don't understand where you get this overwhelming, amazing amount of negativity. Like, the playthrough is fun. We do really well at the game. We tear through the game. We actually do fun side content. We actually, at the end of the game, make an effort to try to do some optional content that unfortunately didn't work out too well because it was a random spawn we couldn't find. But we did. We beat the game in about 20 hours, doing a lot of side content. No, we didn't do all the side content because we understood we had a time constraint. If this was a game that I could play over the course of a month, yeah, I could have easily went and done every side mission, but we knew that's not what it was going to be. And there is a possibility... That in the future, if I have downtime, of course it's not going to be anytime soon with all the releases coming out this hardcore gaming season, but if I have downtime, that I'll return to the game and do some of the side quests and side content that I skipped. I also do have plans to continue 
and do the DLCs for Borderlands 2 that are being planned over the next six, seven months. I think they said all of them should be released by June 2013 or something like that. But I really enjoyed the game. It's actually one of my favorite games of the year. I gave it a Hateful Truth review this week, gave it a high score, and I actually said this is my favorite retail game of the year so far because it is a lot of fun. So for a game that we all had a shit ton of fun playing, to see overwhelming negativity from people just because there's one person involved in the co-op playthrough, I say, fuck you. Like, where do you get off? Where do you get off being such a nasty fucking prick that you say shit like that and you do nasty shit to someone who's actually doing a good job? I don't know if it's jealousy. I don't know if it's just plain, you know, maybe you didn't like stuff that he did previously and because of that you just like to shit all over him. But it needs to fucking stop because I'll tell you right now. When I do the Borderlands DLCs, he's probably going to be doing them with me because he's keeping the game. Probably so will Rambo because Rambo has the game. And there's no reason for him not to. So for, I don't want to hear this shit anymore. I really don't. I don't want to see it on my forums. I don't want to see it on the comments of the videos. And I don't want to see it on Twitter. Because it's immature. It's not acceptable. It's disrespectful. And it's fucking stupid. He never did anything mean to you, so why do you gotta be fucking mean to him? I just don't understand this mentality. I don't. It's a bullyish mentality is what it is. Ugh, we're gonna push him around because we don't particularly like maybe how his voice sounds or because he made one bad joke or whatever and he gets to play with DSP. This isn't fair. Let's all make fun of him on the internet. Fuck you. Grow the fuck up. Seriously. Like, I'm just, I feel like I'm not have to be a parent to people acting so immature. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. So, in the case of Borderlands 2, one of my favorite games of the year, one of my favorite playthroughs I've done all year, and, but people, I know for a fact, some people are not giving it a chance just because Chris was involved. Cut that shit out. Clean the beeswax out of your fucking ears. Actually watch the playthrough, and you'll see that he's not a detriment, okay? In addition to that, I do understand that a lot of people over the course of the week actually told me, Phil, specifically, we, we're not watching your playthrough yet because we want to play the game ourselves. And in fact, people on my forums have just started to post up saying, all right, we finally beat the game, now we're watching Phil's playthrough, you know, it's entertaining, blah, blah, blah. So, thank you to everyone who actually watches the playthrough and understands and isn't being some kind of a fucking bullyish asshole to one of the participants of the playthrough. I can't believe I even have to bring it up, but I have to because some of people just fucking are pricks and need to be called out, okay? All right, so that's that. I've said it. I'm done ranting. We can move on. Okay, on Saturday, John Rambo came over for the first time in a long time. We did an in-person Smart Guys, which is over on John Rambo Presents. We did uh, WWE Night of Champions uh, simulation matches in WWE 12. This is going to be the final simulation for WWE that we do in that particular version of the game. Of course, then I started getting messages, Phil, you're wrong. You don't understand. WWE 13 comes out October 30th, and the, the pay-per-view is the week before that, so you can simulate. Listen, when I say things, I say them for a reason. I mean it. This will be the last pay-per-view we're simulating, or the last WWE pay-per-view we're simulating in WWE 12. That last weekend of the month, I'm going to be busy. Panda Lee's going to be visiting me, and I'm not going to be doing Sims that week. We're going to be doing the Sims the week later, just like we do at Night of Champions, and this is going to be a neat opportunity because it'll be the first week that WWE 13 is out, so we'll be able to simulate matches in that game for the very first time and test out how it works and what the improvements have been. So that's great, and that's what we're going to be doing, just so everyone knows. And then we also did a full co-op playthrough of Double Dragon Neon, which incidentally I thought was a pretty good game for what it was. It was a nostalgic throwback to the beat-em-up content of the 80s. It had a lot of 80s references of pop culture and things of the time. The actual gameplay played like an 80s game. That is what they were going for with this game. And why some fucking idiotic mainstream reviewers don't understand that when they're going for something and they hit it, it doesn't mean that it's a bad game. I don't get it. Same thing happened with Duke Nukem Forever last year. They were going for a game that played like a game from the 1990s, that had chauvinistic humor, that had this nostalgic kind of stuff from that time period, because it was a game being developed in the 1990s. Just because it took 15 years to make doesn't mean it wasn't a game being developed to release in the 1990s. So if you understood the frame of reference, you would have liked the game. But if you're an idiot, and you do no research, and you just try to review a game cold, you fucking fail. So I'm really pissed that John and I did a co-op playthrough of this game, and a lot of people actually said on it, I heard this game sucks, oh, fuck this. 
No, that's not the attitude you should go into when you watch a playthrough. Give it a chance. Now, if you really didn't like the playthrough, okay. If you really don't like the game, okay. But have valid reasons other than, well, I read on the internet that the game sucks at because IGN said so. Fuck IGN. You know who it was that reviewed that game. You know that I have problems with him. And I'm thinking of eventually reviewing Double Dragon Neon. The problem is I don't know if I'm going to have time, okay? And I'm going to talk a little bit about that right now because time is a massive issue for me right now. So let's get into it. What's coming up this week in the future? The, the weekend preview, what to expect this week. <clears throat> okay, here's the deal. Pandali is coming to visit on Thursday. Now what that means is that I have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and part of Thursday to put up gameplay this week. Problem is, I have a shit ton of stuff that I'm finishing up, stuff that's popped up out of nowhere, <clears throat> and also new games coming out on Tuesday. So, perfect example for tomorrow. I absolutely, I absolutely must complete Black Mesa tomorrow, okay? That's a must, that's going to happen. So Monday, Black Mesa will conclude. As I said, I beat Double Dragon Neon, now I also have completed Black Mesa, okay? I like to review them, okay? But that takes a lot of time, that takes video editing and such, okay? In addition to that, I don't know how many people heard about this, but Darksiders 2 had a, has a DLC called Arvel's Tomb. It's the first DLC for the game, it's a, it's a completely new dungeon, new boss, and uh, they decided to accident, I don't know if it was an accident, but they released it early. It was supposed to be released during the week this week, in which case I was going to say, listen, I just have no time to play it. I have too many retail releases coming out. But they leaked it over the weekend, and I got a code in my email, so I entered it and I actually downloaded it. But now the question is, I only have one day. There's no way possible that I can beat Black Mesa, review two games, and do the Argyll Stoom DLC in one day. In fact, I don't even know if it's possible to do just finish Black Mesa and do the Argyll's Tomb DLC in one day. So, really, I have to think about what I'm going to do tomorrow. In addition to all that already going on, last week Resident Evil 6 had a new demo released. And if you weren't aware of this, this is not the demo from E3. This is a completely new demo that was released, um, showcasing a completely different gameplay of the game. Panda Lee actually played it on her channel. If you want to check it out, she did a full playthrough of it. But I have just not had the chance. I've been busy with Borderlands and other stuff. And being that the game comes out in like uh, a week and a half, <clears throat> is it even worth it for me to play the demo this close to release? I don't know. And so now I'm kind of up in questions of what I should do on Monday. I'm definitely beating Black Mesa no matter what. But the question is, should I try to do Argyle's Tomb? Should I play the Resident Evil 6 demo? Should I review Double Dragon Neon? Should I review Black Mesa? What should I do on Monday? I'm not sure. I guarantee you Black Mesa will conclude, but I will make a decision sometime during the day on Monday of what else I'm going to be doing. Now, in addition to all that, we've got Tuesday. Now, Tuesday is a huge day, because guess what? Massive amount of retail releases, okay? But there's some controversy, some confusion around it, because here's the thing. The first retail release that supposedly is coming out this week is Family Guy Return to the Multiverse, okay? A two-player co-op game um, that looks like it's going to be a lot of fun, but no one's 100% if this game comes out this week. Amazon lists it as coming out on November 1st, okay? Uh, other websites like GameStop don't even have a release date for it. Now, I went to my local GameStop last week to pick up uh, games, and I asked them, and they said, we think it's coming out next week. We're not 100%, but we think it's coming out next week. So that's a problem, because if I don't know if the game's coming out, I don't know if I can, should definitively say, yes, I'm playing it or not, okay? In addition to that, Dead or Alive 5 comes out. In addition to that, One Piece Warriors comes out, which is a unique hybrid of the Dynasty Warrior series with the One Piece manga and anime into a, a, a whole. I played it at E3, and I really liked it. In addition to that, Marvel vs. Capcom Origins is coming out. Now, if you don't know what that is, it's an Xbox Live PSN title that includes Marvel Super Heroes and Marvel vs. Capcom 1. Um, Marvel vs. Capcom 1, I don't know how many people know this, but I was actually one of the best player, tournament players of that game in the world. I was actually at the very last tournament ever held at it at a Nationals. I got fifth place, okay? So, <clears throat> I'm really fucking good at that game. So here's really what my game plan is going to be. I don't know if Family Guy is coming out, 
but it is two player co-op and I actually spoke with Panda Lee about this I said you're going to be here this weekend I want let's do some fun co-op she says all right well definitely let's do some Dead or Alive 5 because she loves the Dead or Alive series by the way she'll be playing Dead or Alive 5 this week over on her YouTube channel Panda Lee Games so you can check out her footage of that if you'd like I'll be covering it on DSP Street Fighter okay so we're definitely going to do some co-op of that when she's here this weekend. So expect co-op gameplay of Dead or Alive 5 this weekend over on DHP Street Fighter. But I asked her, between One Piece Warriors and Family Guy, which would you like to play? And then when we actually looked into it, it seems that One Piece Warriors may not have an actual co-op campaign. Similarly to the other Dynasty Warriors games, it has co-op play, but I don't think that's the story mode of the game. It's not clear. If anyone knows it can clarify, let me know. Like, I know the game's been out in other countries for a hundred fucking years already, but if someone could clarify if the game has two-player co-op of the story, please let me know. If it does, then that might be what we do for co-op as well this weekend. If not, we may do Family Guy if it comes out as co-op this weekend. So basically every game that comes out this week is possible for co-op, and we're considering out of those three games which ones we're going to be playing co-op this weekend. But you'll definitely see co-op co gameplay here on DSP Gaming of either Family Guy or One Piece Warriors, and you will see... Dead or Alive 5 over on DSP Street Fighter, okay? So what, are you, what do you, should you expect on Tuesday? You should definitely expect One Piece Warriors probably on Tuesday here on DSP Gaming and then Dead or Alive 5 over on DSP Street Fighter and probably some online play of Marvel vs. Capcom 1 over on DSP Street Fighter. That's what I'm gearing to do. I'm probably going to do some of the story of One Piece on Tuesday here, some of the characters and stories and tutorials and things over on Dead or Alive 5 on DSP Street Fighter, and then online play of Marvel vs. Capcom uh, 1 on DSP Street Fighter as well. And I'm probably going to be doing that Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So that's what you can probably expect. I unfortunately have to delay Ask the King. I'll say that again. I unfortunately have to delay this month's edition of Ask the King. This happens every single September, October. It does. Every check. Every year I end up delaying it either in September or October because there's too many games coming out. It's just too much going on. I'm going to have three games that I'm juggling at once. Actually, four games at one point that I'll be juggling at once. I just do not have time, unfortunately, to do an Ask the King. So that's going to be delayed. I will make an announcement later on of when that will be delayed to, but for now it's delayed indefinitely until sometime when I can have time to do it again, okay? When Leanna's here, she's coming on Thursday, but we're probably not going to do any gaming on Thursday. We'll start on Friday. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you'll probably see co-op gameplay from us. Some fighting game stuff over on DSP Street Fighter and some either Family Guy or One Piece here on DSP Gaming. And then you'll see the weekend preview on Monday night but there's really not much to say. That week after is Resident Evil 6, where I'll be doing a full co-op playthrough with John Rambo, just like we did with Borderlands, starting that Tuesday. So, holy fucking overdrive. An insane amount of stuff for me to do. Some stuff is unfortunately gonna get, get brushed under the rug, because I'm not gonna have time to do it all. I fully understand that. So, an insanely jam-packed week of content. I hope that you'll join me for it. Sorry that I went so long with everything in the week in preview, but as, as usual, again, I need to address these kind of issues as they come up, and I have all this confusion this week of people wondering what I'm going to play. Now you know at least what I'm considering, and that's that. So that's it. If you want definitive updates on what I'm doing during the course of the week, always check my Twitter and Facebook. That's where you're going to find that specific info during the week as things change, okay? So thanks a lot. I'm DSP. Thanks for, for listening to the whole video, and I will see you for new gameplay this week. Peace.